What's going on everybody? It is Will with Very Great Software and today we have some exciting news. I'm about to show you in this video the Visual Studio Code Online Edition like in your browser. Visual Studio Code in your browser. That's pretty cool. That's what we're going to get to and also if you guys haven't already please subscribe, like, comment, dislike, do all the things on the channel. Also uh, go check out my website verygreatsoftware.com. There's not much there yet but there I will be uploading blog posts, maybe building like a community, whatever it is, so go check that out. Also, I have a Discord server. Um, I'll have to leave the link down in the description. I'll leave all these links down in the description. And also, I have a newsletter and email list, whatever you want to call it. I have that as well started, so I'll be bringing you guys notifications uh, a lot quicker of like what I'm doing, what I've been working on, um, giving you guys more transparency into what I've been working on every single day. So without further ado, Let's get into this. So, quick Google search shows you that uh, Microsoft takes Visual Studio Code to the browser. So, no longer needing to install the extension, it is all within your browser. And you can go there by going to vscode.dev, a very short URL, which is pretty nice. And boom, the same thing, just like this. Like, this is so much similar. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So basically, VS Code in your browser, no need to install. Uh, let's go to read the announcement, and then we'll play around with it. So apparently, back in 2019, they uh, acquired the VS Code.dev, which is a pretty smart idea. So obviously, since it's in your browser, you can do local development with the cloud tools. So cloud tools being Visual Studio Code being you know hosted via the cloud and it can access your local files on your machine even though it's in the browser through the file system access API. So unfortunately this will only work with Chromium and Edge. Uh, so I believe any, I don't know if it's just Edge and Chrome specifically, I'll have to try it out with Brave. We'll try it out now because uh, Brave is built on top of Chromium and Chromium is like the open source project for all browsers, uh, modern browsers to use nowadays. So you can do local file viewing editing you can take quick notes and mark down um, and I'll build client-side HTML JavaScript CSS applications in conjunction with browser tools for debugging uh, maybe we'll take a look into that later maybe not right now uh, edit your code on low-powered machines like Chromebooks um, where you can't easily install VS code so that's great like you can really do this on anything you could do this you maybe potentially on your phone. Um, I did read right here, you can also develop on your iPad. Now that's pretty slick, that's pretty cool. And uh, you can even uh, upload and download files using the Files app within the App Store on Apple. Also, what's pretty nifty is uh, extensions. So we still get the ability to install extensions on VS Code, so you can do most UI customization extensions, themes, key maps, snippets, all work in it, and you can even enable roaming between the browser, desktop, and GitHub code spaces through the settings sync, that's pretty cool. Um, extensions that run on Node.js code that use OS specific modules or shell out local ex executables still show but they are marked as unavailable because that makes sense right it's being run in your browser your browser can only handle HTML CSS and JavaScript it can't really run PowerShell, PowerShell files it can't run bash files it can't run node.js in your browser um, all because that is OS specific not browser specific so maybe one day we can get to the point where with this like local the, with the file access API for the browser maybe we can tie that bridge so that we can actually install extensions locally on your machine but the only thing that's not being installed is Visual Studio Code so it's like if you want to expand Visual Studio Code locally maybe we could work on that so we'll have to see what happens but uh, so far this is looking pretty cool there is um, an interesting one at Luna Paint Image Editor uh, edit raster files directly in Visual Studio Code. That's awesome. This is pretty amazing. So this is going to be a very lightweight thing. Not really necessarily recommended for like heavy uh, programming work. You might still want to use an IDE for that. But this is, would be more so for I guess a code editor. If it's just something quick like a markdown file, HTML, CSS, JavaScript file. Not so much um, where you have to run like a unit tests or uh, anything that's not necessarily 
um, you know, based in like C sharp or C plus plus, because you know you need to install multiple plugins. Because also you don't get access to a terminal, terminal. So uh, some drawbacks. So right now it's just kind of like a really nice online code editor. So enough around playing with the announcement. Let's actually try to use Visual Studio Code. So apparently you can hook this thing up to GitHub and then it just makes editing your GitHub repository super easy. So let's log into GitHub here and let's find uh, a repository that I have in my GitHub profile that uh, is public so I can see if I can't pull it in. Um, these are all private. Uh, oh yeah, an extension that I had built uh, for Visual Studio Code a while ago. All right, so all you need to do apparently is go to the repository, and I don't know if it has to be public, but let's try this out, VS code.dev forward slash, and then the link to the GitHub repository. And it actually works. Okay, the extension GitHub repositories wants to sign in using GitHub, allow it, continue. All right, now that that is pretty stinking sweet right there. So I got my README, a, a check style extension for Visual Studio Code uh, for Java because back in my old job, um, I was we were running a running a bunch of Java uh, Java code, and there wasn't really a good check style um, extension for Visual Studio Code, so I wrote one. Um, I didn't really haven't contributed to it since. I wonder how many installs it has, but uh, here you'll see that there's my client and server folders um yeah this is uh this is pretty interesting so i can go in here uh so like if i just add a comment like this takes an output string and splits it into di diagnostic class array. I don't know. I can't remember how I wrote this because this was years ago. And then I can just save that file and then we can go to source control here. Your changes will be committed directly to the master branch on GitHub. Okay, so we don't want that. Um, is there a way? Oh yeah, see, look at terminals are not accepted so this is kind of a drawback because uh, sometimes you don't want to directly commit to master wonder if we can view as a tree commit refresh okay we can create a new branch test switch to branch okay and so it basically just refreshes the entire page reloads the project which makes sense of like how this would all would all work uh, so now it still has my change, which is really cool. And then uh, I can then stage my change. And then I can commit my change. Oh, message test. I can commit my change. And then I can create a pull request, maybe. Maybe not. Um, let's go back to my repository. I should have another branch called test. There we go. Create a new pull request. And uh, we'll check it out here. And yep, yeah, there you go. You can see my change. That That's pretty awesome. And uh, it looks here like uh, with all the extensions, we can actually maybe install Python. It has limited functionality in the code for the web. Uh, contains extensions which are not supported. So. Yeah, like it said, that there's not gonna be a whole bunch of extensions that you can install, but we can install some UI stuff, so why not why not see a flat style theme for VS Code? Let's install this, see how it looks. Flat UI immersed, okay. Set color theme, how about flat and dark? Now let's try to open up a folder. Local file system access is unsupported. Uh, your current browser does not support local file system access. Okay, so I can't do it. You can't do it with Embrave. I guess it is actually just Chrome and uh, Edge. 
So good to know about that. But we can still upload here and uh, like upload a file, like maybe a git ignore. But yeah, open up a file here. Uh, maybe I wanna take all these away. Click save and it automatically saves it. Did it save it in the same spot? Oh no, so it still saves it in my downloads folder. So um, yeah, definitely if you're gonna be using this, you can only use it on Chrome extent and Edge. And it looks like still extensions are limited, um, but still I feel like this is a really good step forward for Visual Studio Code. Amazing work, Microsoft, I love this idea. Anyways, that is it for today's video. I just wanted to show you off the news, how it's working, how it is so far. Maybe I'll keep you guys up to date on all of the changes that are happening with Visual Studio Code online in the browser. If you guys like this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, leave, just like it. Leave a comment, tell me how I'm doing. Subscribe, please subscribe. I need more subscribers on this channel. And uh, check out newsletter, website, Discord, all the things. And I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Goodbye.